Lauren, tell us where you're from. Um, well, me and Emily are both from Oregon. Um, uh -huh. Go to the same school here. Mm -hmm. And yeah, that's pretty much it. We go to school in Gresham here in Oregon. Um, we're taking our board next month in June, hopefully, still. I know. Who knows? Who knows what's going to happen? Right? So we're trying to prepare uh -huh. for that as uh -huh. we can. Good. Great, great. Thank you, Lori. And um, how's the weather over there today in Oregon? Good. It's nice. Decent. Decent. Cloudy, Decent. not raining. Uh-huh. All right. So today we are here because we had some questions from um, you ladies. And there's some, you know, issues that everybody has. So we're going to try to tackle them together through a conversation. One of my role as student at DHS is to coach as well. And that is not just with just the board examination, but sometimes it is about the brain. It is how we function in here. So I would love to share everything that I can in order for all of us to be more efficient. And I teach this not just in dentistry, but also for software engineers, you know, in many different fields. I teach speakers how to memorize their speech as well, for example, too. So uh, I hope we can get a lot out of it. So, hey, Lauren, go ahead, shoot me a question. So um, something that I've been struggling with a lot, like throughout all of school, is mm -hmm. just test anxiety. And since this is such a big board, I was just wondering if you had any maybe mm. tips or something to kind of to help ease with that a little bit going mm -hmm. into it. Because like I know we all prepare so much and study a lot for it, mm -hmm. but once you're in the moment of the actual exam, mm -hmm. Anxiety can just overcome you a lot, and yeah, so I've sure. been wondering if you have anything kind of to help with that. Sure, that is true. And you know, let's dive a little bit even deeper into that. So, is this anxiety related to just the examination, or in general, you always had a little bit of anxiety studying and taking any sort of test? Yeah, well, for me, it's kind of general anxiety, which kind of builds up to the moment of the exam because we start studying and preparing so mm -hmm. far ahead that it just kind of builds up with each day and studying and preparing mm -hmm. and all that kind of like okay. comes together okay. all for the day. Did you, like, for the big day, right? The big day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Did you always felt that when you were, you know, high school and things like that too, or is it more recently with dental hygiene? I think it's grown in dental hygiene school, but I've mm -hmm. always had bad test experience experiences. Mm -hmm. And so I think mm -hmm. that's why mm -hmm. it's built up a little more because in my mind, I'm like, well, if I used to struggle in high school with test mm -hmm. anxiety, how is it going to be? The day I take my board. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Thanks for sharing that. And, you know, I'll tell you that it's actually very, very common. And let's dive a little bit deeper because I love psychology and the brain. And wh why do we get anxious? Do you know why we get anxious? Our bl it brain's is. playing a trick on us. <laughs> and it is. It's actually the reason why for that is because the brain is trying to protect us or, you know, it's a whole body mechanism. So anxiousness is a way for us to react to something. Well, back in the days, you know, we were built to hunt. We were built to survive. We were not built to take the NBDHE, you know. Um, it was really a survival problem. So anxiety really meant that your body is actually working properly to avoid, you know, a danger situation. So probably what you're perceiving right now is, is trying to just think, okay, hey, this is not dangerous, but it, it's just something that you can't predict. You know, it's kind of like lion coming out of nowhere. It's like, what, what am I, what am I going to get? Is it going to be difficult, easy? Like, am I going to get what I study? You know? So in a way, I just want to say that it's normal. So it means like your body is functioning fine. So, so, you know, we're healthy, we're healthy at least, right? <laughs> and we're just sensing ourselves out. Uh-huh. But then, I mean, it still doesn't solve your question, right? How, how, what can I do? What can I do here to help? And um, I think my, and I thought, I think about this all the time. Obviously, there are tips and tricks that I teach all day long. But what I want you to just see is this. So, you know, when anxiety comes, there's always a trigger. There's something that's gonna make it roll. 
And it's important for us to find that trigger. So it can be as little as just opening the book can be a trigger. It can just be the thought of sitting in exam can be a trigger. It can be holding a specific pen, sitting in front of the computer. So I think one of the homework I would like to give you, if possible, is just to understand yourself, th that trigger. What is it? Right? Is it me doing this a certain way? And then once you notice that, I want you to think about that too. You know when anxiety comes, before it gets to the brain, like the body reacts within seconds. It's like, you know, you probably start feeling some sort of bodily sensation. It might not be like, I feel like I'm choking. It, can, it doesn't have to be that serious. But I want you to notice if there's something in your body that starts signaling that. Did, did you experience any of that before? Like, can you give us some clue of what happens in your body? Um, well, I think for me is I tend to shut down. And so when it comes to studying, I'll open up student RDH or my textbook or something. Mm -hmm. And it just like, I almost kind of just want to look away from it. It's just the pressure that builds yeah. up. Mm -hmm. And I just kind of like, I don't know, maybe just I need to like take oh. some deep breaths before I start reading or studying mm -hmm. or something. Mm -hmm. I see. So I, I feel like your coping mechanism is just opening it. Okay, you're doing step one, mm -hmm. but you kind of just do something else. So you yeah, kind I of avoid. Yeah. Uh huh. I see, I see. Well, you know, in, in everybody has a different way of coping with it, okay? I, I have anxiety too when, um, you know, I, there are a lot of things I deal with. And sometimes it's just, you know, I, I want to avoid all of that too. And let's just think about what we can do better here because I think those are all two related things, right? You being anxious and then you avoiding the problem, those are all in one category of trying to just, you know, deal with this anxiety so again i want you to find this. so it seems like the trigger of you feeling anxious and avoiding is literally just opening something that's related to the examination that's already something that gives you a trigger and you say i want to avoid that mm -hmm. now obviously avoiding doesn't do anything right i mean i don't have to remind you of that right yeah. <laughs> emily can tell you that any of your classmates can tell you that right so how, what are we going to do? Let's, let's take some actionable items here today. What are the things that we can do to stop doing that? And is there something that you ever thought saying, I'm, I'm going to do this, this way, instead of avoiding it? Maybe just taking it like one step at a time rather than being like putting myself on a schedule. Mm -hmm. or... Okay. Um, like saying, I'm going to finish this section and kind of like reward myself like through like, you know what I mean? Like good work. work 20 minutes, then reward myself like a 10 minute yeah. break from it yeah. or something. Great, great. So I think you have all the right words here. Let's put it into action though. This okay. is my suggestion, okay? I know there are many suggestions, but from my experience, when you start something, and that's me, that's what I do exactly. Before I start a task, you know, I write it down. And I write it down as, this is my um, book, you know, my, my calendar of things that I have to do throughout the day. But I am very detailed of what I write. I'm not just going to say radiology. Because what in radiology? It's too vague. When it's too vague, our brain cannot process it, our body cannot process it. So we're going to be really specific. And you're going to say, for example, this is what I wrote, research medical conditions, infection disease summary, not for now, but for the top under 50 drugs booklet. So anyhow, you know, that's my own summary. But I write down exactly what I'm going to do within the next 30 minutes. Okay. Instead of being radiology, I mean... You mean the whole chapter? I mean, I can't do yeah. that. Yeah. I can't do that either, right? So you say, I'm gonna finish from page 15 to 25 within 30 minutes, and then you're not done yet, okay? Highlight important keywords, like literally things that need to happen. You're, we're like chunking it into 
things that you can actually do, not things that are vague. Does that make any sense here? Yeah, that makes sense. So get yeah. more specific with scheduling and yes. write things down and just have it visually there in front of you. Yes, yeah, and and it could be, for example, let's say uh, you're done studying radiology, you wanna take quiz. Well, instead of saying quiz, literally you're gonna write, take radiology quiz and um, assess how many I got correct and incorrect and um, review the questions I did um, score poorly or things like that. So you are again specific and you're like, can I, did I do this? Yes, 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 and yes. So uh -huh. we're, yeah, breaking it down. It's like giving baby food, you know, saying like really breaking it down, making something that we can actually absorb. And if you do that for every item that you need to do in life, you know, life, I mean, just everything becomes more manageable. That's what I found. Because in, in the beginning, too, when I was writing my, you know, to-do list with student RDH, there was like so many, but I couldn't, like, I, my body, my brain could not process what actually I had to do. And then one last thing, if I may add, this is, and I'll tell you exactly what I do. <laughs> Every day or whenever I do a task, in, I write down what I have to do, but you know what I write? I write down how I'm gonna feel after that. That's my own reward. So I write down today, on the sale, I'll tell you exactly what I wrote down today. So today I had probably um, 10 phone calls with professors, schools, or students, and my whole day was chunked into 30 minutes of phone calls after phone calls. And what happens after that, I get very overwhelmed just because I had so much to do. I have so many follow-ups after that. I, but today my goal is that I, I, I want to feel like I manage my energy well. So I, I, I'm trying to put a feeling to the task. It's not just done task because everything you do reflects back on how you feel, right? Yes. So let's say, you know, Lauren, let's talk about this. Let's say you finished uh, your radiology, um, you know, one hour review. What, what do you think you can write and how you're going to feel about it? Probably relieved that I finished it, but also overwhelmed with the information. Mm -hmm. so, maybe so I like that word, relieved. You want to feel relieved that you actually did that. You want to feel accomplished yes, that accomplished. You, you did that, right? And when you start actually getting into the habit of doing that, you know, it's, it's going to become second nature. You're going to crave that feeling and being able to break down things easier, you know, in smaller portion. And I read this book that's called Atomic Habits. Have you ever heard about this? No, I haven't heard about that. Yeah, no, it's, a, it's just awesome book. Not too, not too complicated. It, you know, you can't imagine what it is about habits and how yeah. we build habits like atomic at an atomic level, which is such a atom like such a small level mm -hmm. and if we improve just one percent per day not even one percent if you improve 0 0.5 percent per day if you accumulate that it's a snowball effect so instead of saying that like, i need to be a different person tomorrow you know saying can i do this one thing today write down exactly what i'm going to do write down how i'm going to feel after this entire process or the day and how i'm going to sleep then you improved already by even more than one person. So yeah. just, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. Any, you know, anything you want to add here, Lauren, you know, it's your experience. It needs to be about you. Yeah, I think this was really well said how you explained everything to me and just, mm -hmm. I'm definitely going to try to make my schedule a little more specific and maybe do it smaller sections because I do have problems where I'm like okay I'm gonna get microbiology done in two days I don't really write down like mm -hmm. I'm gonna do this section mm -hmm. of this section mm -hmm. in half hour you know mm -hmm. I think I'm definitely gonna try that mm -hmm. and then maybe the whole feelings thing sounded really nice to me mm -hmm. awesome and um, I, that's that. If we say microbiology, I mean, for example, if you give, if you say like, you know, I need to start microbiology right now and finish it in two days, 
my body, my brain already cannot even process it. Yeah. It's like you're trying to swallow something that's bigger than yourself. It's not going to go down your throat. Mm -hmm. So instead of swallowing, you want to avoid it. Exactly. Yeah. So it's just chopping it off. Um, and I can imagine that, for example, if you give me like, hey, you need to organize your entire closet within the next two hours. I'm like, I'm going to just watch some Netflix right now. Thank you. Yeah, exactly. Right? Mm -hmm. But if you say, just, just pick up three shirts and put it on the hanger, like I can do that. Yeah. Yeah. Baby steps. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Right. But, you know, this doesn't stop here. And, you know, try. you can take a screenshot of what you do. You know, you can send me, you know, on your phone, like what you have written. And I would love to see it. I would love to share it. I would love to see what else we can do to improve this process. Yeah. How many days until you have the boards, Lauren? Um, my board is June 23rd. So that's so about one month. A little yeah. less than a month. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Great. Great. Hey, one month is so much time to actually, mm -hmm. and you, when you cultivate that feeling of success of, and I overcame the challenge, chunk by chunk every day, you know, you grow with that feeling. It grows inside you when you go to the board examination. That feeling can actually really overpower the frustration that you might have. And, uh, you know, and I know for, you know, anxiety is a, is a big word. It's something big by just implementing this feeling because, you know, our brain cannot tell the difference between what's real and what's not, actually. So... If you tell your brain, you're great. If you tell your brain, you did everything. If you tell your brain that you're not anxious anymore, that's what it's going to start believing. That makes sense. Yeah. I know it's all very uh, philosophical, but yeah, literally. <laughs> this thing sense. controls everything. Yeah, it does. <laughs> <laughs> Agree. Well, Lauren, you're feel, feel free to just come back. We can come back to this question if you have, you know, something that you wanted to add. Mm -hmm. And then uh, let's see what Emily had for us. Um, so kind of almost going off of that, uh -huh. I feel like I don't necessarily struggle with test anxiety, uh -huh. but it's just the idea of, oh, we're going to a testing center. It's a brand new environment. I don't know exactly yeah. what to expect. I feel like mm -hmm. that portion of it can kind of mess with my brain and psych me out a little bit right before I sit yeah. down for the test. So I yeah. guess kind of just going off of that, do you have like any recommendations of mm -hmm. how to keep yourself calm right before the test? Mm -hmm. um, make sure none of that information that you're trying to remember slips away at the last minute mm -hmm. or anything along those lines, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, then... I, I love that you said that because every single person, you know, I think would need to hear that, you know, it's something that everybody shares. So, you know, I'm going to ask you, have you visited the test center? Yeah, it's a testing mm -hmm. center. I think it's in Hillsboro, I want to say. Mm -hmm. So have you gone there yet? No, not that one. We went to a different Can testing center before, but not this one. Do you think you can go there? Is that within reach of your driving or can you carve out an hour to be there? Probably, yeah. Uh -huh. Okay, okay. So we're going to play the same trick with our brain about if you know, your brain is going to train yourself to be successful. So, um, for example, Mark Zuckerberg, you know who this, he is? He's the, um, the founder of Facebook. He owns also Instagram. Mm -hmm. He wears the same shirt every day. I mean, not the same shirt per se, but the same freaking color and, and brand and everything. The reason why is because you want to eliminate anything that is unpredictable out of your life. Because unpredictability gives us anxiety. You know, like it's going back to, you know, back in the days, we used to be hunted by lions, you know, saying, I don't know if I take the next step, if there's going to be an animal coming out of the bushes. Like that, that's anxiety. But if you have a clear path, if you know, if you see clearly, the anxiety will be gone. So, you know, if it's within reach, that's what I'm asking, visit it. You're going to drive there. You know, exact time it. It does it takes me 20 minutes, 30 minutes. How many hours do I have to leave before the examination to um, get there on time and to give myself time? Where is the parking lot? How much is parking? 
Like, do I have coins? Like, you want to eliminate every single piece that gives you unpredictability. And that can be as little as how much is parking. Where's the entrance? Sometimes they block the front door for the exam. They only let you go through the back door, whatever that is, especially right now with what's happening. Who knows where the entrance is, right? So you don't want to be there and try to figure that out when you are supposed to be there at 8.30. Mm -hmm. So it's, and if you can go the elevator, you don't have to go inside the testing center. You can probably see the door at least. You can probably even get in the door and say, oh, you know, sorry, I'm, I'm in the wrong room. Just, just do that. <laughs> what I want you to do is see, see the environment. Okay, bring that back. So now you have the environment that you're working with. Now you're going to add your own story to that. So you have about a month still. You're going to create the success story in your head. That's going to look like this. I'm going to drive that day do this before i get off the car i'm just gonna um remind myself that i did great so far i'm not gonna start reading a random textbook please don't do that ever it only creates more anxiety it's like i didn't know that oh my god i'm gonna fail like it's so easy to tumble right so you're just gonna focus on like i've done this i, I got this I, I can do this i can do this and then you're gonna imagine yourself getting in that room you know taking your examination and then being able to visualize it in your head. Again, if you visualize it here, it's going to roll the way you planned in your head. Right. But being able to actually get those components is important. And then, yeah, yeah. Familiarize yourself. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Does, does that make sense, Emily? Yeah, definitely. I like the idea of at least just driving by it and making sure yeah. the route makes sense to me and I don't want to like, get lost on the morning of my test or yeah. anything like that. So I feel like that would mm -hmm. um, alleviate some of like those anxieties of just like the unknown and not even the actual yeah. test, but just getting myself there, I feel like is mm -hmm. a little bit of anxiety. Yes. Right. And you know, the way you feel in the morning will determine how you feel that entire day. So if that morning starts with like, I don't know where I'm driving, you know, it might be, you know, a little bit more difficult to get through the test. You might still do great, you know, you might still perform great. And then I think you, you talked about taking deep breath and that sounds so freaking cliche, you know, that sounds like, yeah, obviously, you know, but I don't want to do that. But you know how, how breathing works? And I'm not here to, you know, like guide you through a meditation. But there's a, there's a reason for that too. And it's all again, you know, built in here. What it is, is in this cliche of mind-body connection, okay? Bear with me. So if you feel a certain way in your body, your brain is going to react to that. If your brain reacts to that, you're, it's going to send signal to your body saying, I have pain. You know, so it's, it's working together. It's like a chain. So by breathing, what are you actually doing is tricking your brain that everything is great. You're calm. Like you're not calm here, but by physically doing the calming exercise, you're telling your body that it's great. I'm calm. You know, sometimes you have to fake it to make it. That's what you're doing. You're faking it. And then this is going to respond. And then it's going to go back to your body to respond that way. So as, as long as, you know, I hate to say, hey, take a deep breath. I'm even saying on student RDH, if you have taken the mock exam, I take a, take a deep breath. But <laughs> there's a reason to that. So I'm glad you mentioned that because, you know, I think once we, you know, inside, then hygiene is very much science, right? I mean, we've taken many microbiology classes to, you know, immunology if you understand the science behind it, I think it starts to make a little bit more sense. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, you know, as much as we say, take a deep breath feels like I'm losing 20 seconds of my examination, you know, generally how many minutes, how many hours? So I'm gonna ask you, how many hours do you have in the National Board Examination, the NBDHE? I believe it's nine hours. Right, so it's about nine hours, including the breaks in between. So yes. without the breaks, is about eight hours. So, you know, eight or nine hours. Do you know how many, you know, 
how many hours an average test taker needs in order to finish the MBDHG? That I'm not sure of. Let's take a guess. I'm going to tell you. This is what I'm going to tell you. Way too fast. They finish way too fast. They're done way too fast. They give up way too fast. Maybe like five or six hours. I feel like I have heard stories about people feeling like they finished way too early and they were, they didn't know if that was a good thing or a bad thing. I'll tell you, yeah. And five or six, I wish they stayed five or six hours sitting there. They finish in two to three hours. Oh my goodness. Oh no. <laughs> Meaning that, you know, when you go to the test center, first of all, your body, your mind is just panicking. So when we're panicking, we do things way too fast without doing them in quality. We do them just fast. Your heart is racing and our, everything we do is like going with this, like fast paced. So that's not a good thing. So that's why I'm just going back to, you know, just calming your body down, doing something. And if it's not deep breath, I don't care what you do, but you need to trick your body to stay calm. So you don't go at that crazy speed because the ticket is the failing ticket and we don't want that. Yeah. And I want you to know that you have plenty of time, you know, to resolve all the, to solve all the questions because again, the average is two to three hours. Okay. Wow. Yeah. yeah. So if you need to take five minute break, take it. Okay. I mean, even if you took 10 of those five minute break, you still have time to finish the exam. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You know, some people do push-ups. I mean, that's not my style. Um, so Emily, is there something you, you think you can do to trick your body to calm down? I mean, you seem to be a very calm person to begin with, <laughs> <laughs> but if you, can you think of something, you know, I mean, we're just brainstorming here. There's no right or wrong answer at all. I feel like Sometimes, I feel like sometimes on a test, if I get a really difficult question and it kind of throws me off a little bit afterwards, I need to just, like you said, take a moment, take a deep breath, calm down, know that like that question is past and I need to just yeah, yeah. You know, move on and remember that like, oh, there's more questions and not yeah. get totally hung up on one question so that it affects the rest of my test. That is such a good point. <laughs> Because what happens, and I teach our students to do that. You know, once you get, let's say question number 10, you're like, I, I, I don't know what the answer was. I think I failed, you know, whatever that is. If you feel that way, it's gonna carry on. Question 11, question 12, question 13, you're still at question 20, thinking about question number 10. It's like thinking about your ex-boyfriend when you're still in a relationship. It doesn't work like that or it shouldn't. <laughs> so for our questions, you know, if you keep carrying this baggage, you're not reading correctly. Question number 11, you're not reading correctly. Question number 13, you're thinking about question 10. So you either need to cut it out, you know, take a moment saying I'm done. You know, it's okay. I'm, I'm done with this or there's a flag function in the boards. You flag that and you just move on. Say, I'm gonna come back to it later, but I flagged it. I know which one it is. I don't have to think about it anymore. So use that flag function for things like that. Okay. That's a nice little, I didn't know, realize they have that. It's nice. Yep. Ahead of time. Yes. So you're like question 10, 11, I didn't know. Well, let me just move on and then Hey, I'll have you know, plenty of time, as we said, to review those questions. So that would, that would be, you know, there's so many things we can learn. You know, it's yeah, actually what we do is fascinating. When, you know, I'm getting really excited about the exam part because I feel like, like knowledge is one part, but strategy is another part that, right? Strategy, right? And you have to like marry them together. So thanks for sharing that, Emily, about, you know, what, you know, you wanted to talk about it. Yeah. I think for everybody, if you can go to the examination, go. Like, if you have to drive there every day, just do it. Yeah. It's like second nature, you know where to go, you know. So it's, you know, built into you. And you're going to repeat the same story to yourself. 
I would rather actually you doing that than taking another hour to study. Oh, interesting. Because um, you have to play with your psychology. Yeah. Mental health and psychology is half of passing. It is. It is actually. I've seen, you know, extraordinary students fail. It's not because they didn't know. It's because of what went on in their body and their mind that day of. And it just completely snowballed into negativity. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The whole build up and everything. How is it to build up negativity? It's easy, yeah. right? Easy. Mm -hmm. Easier than building up positivity and <laughs> <laughs> but again, it's, you know, part of our body mechanism to protect ourselves, you know, that that's how we were built, but it's, it's easy to tumble. And I do that too. I have to catch myself sometimes saying enough, enough of that. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, Lauren, do, do, is there something you wanted to um, circle back to or add? Any other questions? Yeah, I feel like we hit a lot of really good points. Just mm -hmm. more thing that was in my mind was mm -hmm. just aside from putting anxiety and like preparing like aside, just, just the focus. Cause we have so like, especially in quarantine right now, mm -hmm. everyone's leaving every day with their whole family at home. Just the focus of, I need mm -hmm. my space. I need yeah. to, do my work it's just been kind of difficult in these times and that kind of leads to like procrastination and mm -hmm. then mm -hmm. kind of studying last minute which probably isn't the best thing to do for an exam like this so just kind of getting into that a little bit yeah wow wow okay let's talk about that how how do you find your own space in this exactly. busy household yeah. Have you been doing something that works for you or is not working for you? Yeah, well, for me, I've, I just think like the distraction of it all, like I'll, I'll be studying one second and I'll hear my family doing this in another room and I'll go mm -hmm. and see what they're doing rather than just mm -hmm. focusing. I just feel like I, like trying to get myself to focus without building up too much pressure. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just the whole thing on its own. I see. Yeah. So, is as you know, when someone talks about something, does that like kind of tempt you to like kind of see what's <laughs> going on? And, like, yeah, did, yeah. Did you just order some food? You know, whatever that is. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Here's someone at the door. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. And uh, have you uh, have you ever seen the video about the tomato technique, the Pomodoro technique that I have on our YouTube channel? No, I haven't seen that. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna draw it for you. It's freaking easy, okay? Let's let's do that. It's so easy. So it goes back to chunking into you know smaller components that we talked about, making it manageable. I'm gonna finish 15 to 25, page 15, 25. That's it, for example. So I'm gonna just draw this for you, for example. And Okay, so I'm, I'm having this stupid, um, you know, virtual background, but um, let me just uh, not do it, okay? Okay, here, here, here's my home, here's my home. Right now I'm between the kitchen and the sofa, that's all I got. Anyhow, so, and I see Emily, you're in the kitchen, you know, so we're all doing our best right now, okay? <laughs> Where are you right now, Lauren? Oh, I'm in my bedroom, I kicked my sister out. Okay. <laughs> we're sharing a room right now, no <laughs> it's hard but okay so what I'm going to draw you is four circles do you see this four circles mm -hmm. so each represents 30 minutes okay so what it is is you said yourself okay saying this 30 minute this is going to be about let's say radiology 15 to 25 page 15 to 25 reach 15 to 25 find the keyword that's it don't give yourself 500 million things to do in 30 minutes when you're done, you're just gonna color it, okay? It's gonna look like this. Then you know you've done it well, you've done it, it's written over here, so prove to yourself you feel good, and it keeps track of your time. So the next 30 minutes, you're gonna say, I'm gonna take the quiz, you know, um, quiz set one, that's in strategy. You can take your textbook, say, I wanna take the first quiz. You're done, you color this, the, the 
If it took you two, I mean one hour, it's actually two tomatoes, okay, two circles, right? If it's three hours, it's six tomatoes, okay? So we keep circling those, but we're writing down what exactly we are doing. So that way, I'm trying to say that manage your time with 30 minutes. I'm not even, let's not even try two hours. Let's just try with 30 minutes. Can you go undistracted for 30 minutes? Is that, is that possible, ladies? Yeah, that's possible. I mean, it, it, 30 minutes. It's like, you know, we, we have 48, 30, 30 minutes per day. So it's manageable. And one more thing, you know, I'm showing you everything that I got. Those are earplugs that I, I swear, I live with 200 pairs of earplugs. Everywhere I go, here on my coffee table, I have earplugs as well. I have them on my bedroom, everywhere. In my backpack, for sure. So those are to prevent me from that distraction. I am constantly reminding myself that no matter what happens, you stay focused. Because, you know, I hear and I'm like, oh, did you buy some new cookies? You know, yeah. hearing things around you is, can be distracting. Yeah, so the simple, you know, those cost sense, you know, I mean, I buy by the box, but if you go to CVS, probably can get them for a few dollars. Um, so, you know, if you can implement something like that, it's like really self-discipline, you know? And have you seen athletes going to the fields? What are they wearing? Like they always have, I mean, maybe they're sponsored and they need to put this as a commercial, like Dr. Dre, whatever that is, but, you know, they're always wearing headphones. And one of the reasons is not because they want to listen to music, you know, it's because they're stopping the distractions from happening. Mm -hmm. Like they're getting in their zone. And if that zone means like this music, one that, that, that it is, you know? So again, you, you're working with your feelings. So like the feeling of being tempted to go out. I mean, we all do that, especially right now. I'm dying for anything exciting right now. Yeah. yeah, exactly. I don't know what the most exciting thing happened in the past um, three months. I can't even think about one thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Anything excited that happened to you, ladies? Like anything that you're like, that was, that was fun. <laughs> past three months? Nope. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I mean, I bought some new yoga clothes. So running shorts, that's about it. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, online shopping happening. You did? I know. I'm waiting for my packages to arrive too. So, <laughs> so yeah, we live for this excitement. But, you know, when we're studying or when we're doing something important, you know, it's better to be focused. So, you know, obviously the answer is yes, you need to be focused. But the question is how, what are you going to do to do that? Yeah. yeah. Emily, do you have any strategies or how you can kind of block distraction? Uh, normally when I study, I go up to my room and I kind of just close the door and mm -hmm. my room is luckily far enough away from the rest of the family that I can't mm -hmm. hear anything going on. I like, like that, that works to my advantage. But I normally, I like to open my window so I can like hear the birds and it kind of calms me down a little bit. Birds is all, yeah. I like to, I don't know, I like to create like a comfortable environment for me to study. And then I feel like once I really get into the groove, I, sometimes it's like kind of hard to even stop studying because it's just like I'm in the zone at that point. Love it. Wow. So maybe you can share us a little bit more. What, what is it that gets you in the zone? You said burst shipping. I mean, that's one of the most wonderful sound of the world. I think I live for that too. Um, you know, what, what else gets you in that groove when you're like, I, I don't care about what's happening right now. What I feel there? like for me, uh -huh. something that makes studying and like taking notes while I'm studying, like a little more exciting is like, I like to use different colored pens mm -hmm. and okay. uh -huh. Draw pictures. I feel like that helps keep me focused. Mm -hmm. I like to like have my door closed. It'll kind of eliminate those distractions, but make sure that like mm -hmm. my room is still, you know, has like the light on and it's not like too dark. I can mm -hmm. have everything spread out in front of me. Mm -hmm. I have like my computer open, my notes, mm -hmm. all that type of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, 
I don't know, just kind of those small things that I've mm. learned over the years of studying that help yeah. me most and help keep me focused. Okay. Um, I just try to recreate those each time. I'm not someone who's really very good at like going like to a coffee shop and studying. It's sometimes mm. too loud for me and yeah. I get distracted a lot more easily. Yeah. But, yeah. Okay. Lovely. Well, Millie, I think you said all the the right things that I want to yeah. I love it. So one thing I see here, what you describe is you actually give yourself predictability in your environment, you know, and I'd love it. It's like my desk is here. My door will always going to be closed. It's, you know, because once that's set, you don't have to think about anything else, but you know what you have to focus on. The rest is all done already. It's like, you know, if you move every single month, I mean, life is hectic, but you know where you live. It's like, you know, that gives you comfort. So I like hearing that. So that's one thing. And, and you know, anybody who's listening, it's like if, if you always have things set in a specific order, you know, matter, that helps a lot. It's, like, it's like all about this one as well. And then uh, also what I hear is that you use colors and things like that, which is wonderful. Why? Because it actually keeps it interesting. It's like our brain needs to feed off dopamine. Dopamine is a feel-good chemical that is released when something is interesting. So I was like, whoa, exciting. I, I bought a new pair of shorts. You know, so that's dopamine. And if you know, obviously there's dopamine you can inject, but we're not trying to do that. We're releasing our own dopamine in our body. So if you feel like there's an exercise that would get too excited, even just picking up a few pens and using different colors, I think that's awesome. Your brain is feeding off that feel good thing. And when you have that chemical combined with things that you have to learn, it's like magic happens, like magic powder, like things are like that. So those are the neurons combining together. So you sprinkle some of that, but it's hard to sprinkle some of that because every time we study, it's like boring. Unless you tell me about the virus, everything is boring, right? Now, virus, I'm like, yeah, what, what else do you know? <laughs> Anything new? Mm -hmm. But honestly, I mean, embryology, oh my God. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not going to lie. So how can you put those sprinkles when things are born? So, you know, anybody who's listening, just find something. And I'm not saying put on loud music because it goes to another point you made, Emily, saying, or you don't like that music in the coffee shop and I'm the same way. Why, 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 why? Let's describe why. Our brain is incapable of doing two things at the same time. If I tell you right now, hey, listen to this, the lyrics of the song, okay? Tell me what the lyrics is and I'm gonna talk to you about the boards at the same time. Like it's impossible to do two things at the same time. Our brain is not designed that way, right? Well, you, you drive a single link. So, you know, that's why distractions, anything, especially music, we might think, oh, it helps me get pumped up, which is which it does. But when it actually comes to um, studying time, I would prefer music that's more like, you know, going with your heart rhythm, like calming it down, like those boring, like meditation, like sleep well music, yeah. you know. And so, yeah, there are a lot of things here that you said, Emily, that really works how, well, with our own body and mind, you know, how it, it is designed. So, I mean, I, I do think, I don't know your scores, but I do think you really actually did, you know, a great job understanding the system for yourself of studying. And, and so are you, Lauren, really just even being able to describe it verbally you know, some of the issues that you want to talk about, it's such a huge step because a lot of students, I'm going to tell you, they're like, I'm overwhelmed, period. I'm like, that's not enough, okay? We really got to think through the process. So even for you to be able to identify, well, it's a little bit of anxiety. It's a bit of like, I don't, you know, do well with, with distractions and I'm easily tempted or I kind of just ignore what I do. Even noticing that, it's like really the first step of you taking an action. Yeah. Yes. And, you know, I, 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 you know, you're very, I'm both very brave to, you know, come forward and say, Hey, I want to talk about this, which is awesome. And, you know, 
I think those are the, some of the things that we can apply in life as well. It's not just like studying, it's like anything we do because, you know, once you're going to start working in a clinic, there are like 500 million things that are going to happen at the same time. Yeah. But you need to finish the patient, finish is not cooperative, your front desk is asking you something, the dentist is like trying to do something, like there's music in the background, there's like, whew. So understanding how your body works, how you can calm yourself down again, we're just faking it until we make it with our whatever um, breathing or sometimes I even do this, this gesture like, you know, I look like a weirdo sometimes, but who cares? I do what I have to do. Who cares? <laughs> right? I'm getting better at not caring about what people think, actually. That's good, yeah. <laughs> how do you feel about that? I'm someone who cares a lot about yeah. what people think. Yeah. yeah. Struggling with that still, <laughs> learning yeah. that in life. Ah, I see, I see. So, Lauren, it might be harder for you to put boundaries in your study schedule. Say, guys, I, I need two hours. Give me two hours, you know? Yeah. Do you think it's a little harder for you because you like to work with people? You like yeah, I like to be play. nice to them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and a lot of people don't understand, like, mm -hmm. um, you know, this dental hygiene board is really a huge deal. Yeah. So mm -hmm. just trying to get people to understand that I need mm -hmm. things to study is kind of a work mm -hmm. in progress right now. Yeah, I see. I see that. Yeah, you're trying to study, but also be part of, you know, someone else's life at the same time. It's, it's tough, but, um, you know, boundaries, as, as easy as it sounds, is very difficult. But, you know, maybe the boundaries when you explain them can be very simple. If it's easy for you, it's, it can be easy for them as well, such as 30 minutes, just like we said with the tomato techniques, 30 minutes, easy for them to understand. Yeah. Easy for you to understand, right? Do you think, yeah, uh, uh, yeah. Lauren, do you think there are a few things that you can do to help you really manage a little bit of this anxiety and give yourself some structure? I think so, especially after, you know, having this chat. Um, I think I definitely have some ideas of what I'm going to do from here on out, kind of with uh, making daily schedules instead of weekly ones and just kind of giving myself outcomes. Mm -hmm. And maybe I'll buy a box of earplugs to block out the sound or something. Yes. Yeah. And I agree. definitely have... Mm -hmm. plans now and do you think you can use those tomato techniques those 30 minutes yeah i'm definitely going to do those 30 minute increments tomato mm -hmm. increments and mm -hmm. okay see how that helps me yeah mm -hmm. okay. awesome and you can you, you add colors to it too okay it doesn't have to be black like i do emily likes yeah. colors so you know that's a feel good thing as well it's like coloring book you know um, you create, and it doesn't have to be tomatoes. You draw whatever you want, tomatoes, I mean, to bananas, whatever you want. So um, it's just, you know, all you need to do is, yeah, it's a visual, you know. So, you know, and it's a feel good. If you like, like at the end of the day, yeah, let's say you circled eight tomatoes. You're like, I studied for four hours without distraction. That's like, wow, you know, that's good. Yeah. But sometimes even when I do it, I'm like, Today was a whole mess because I have what one tomato circle that was like a mess, you know. <laughs> so yeah. It's, yeah, I still do that. I teach our students to do that. It's a you know lifelong process, but yeah, I I I feel Lauren that you're gonna be completely fine. You know, just <laughs> yeah, I know you're gonna implement those few things. Uh, yeah, um, if you're already here on this chat, means you're motivated. Yeah. I'm <laughs> yeah, yeah. And uh, Emily, is, is there something that you want to share with us today about maybe I can do this or, you know, what I'm doing is already great, you know, anything you want to share? I, I really like the idea of like driving to the testing center. I think that is actually probably something that I'll do mm -hmm. um, just to eliminate that stressor when I am going into the test. I like that idea. And then also the tomato technique. I'd never really heard of anything like that, but I feel like it's a good way to track your progress. And on really good days, you can kind of look back and see how many you filled in and be like, yeah. I did really get something accomplished today. And like, I can be proud of that. Perfect. 
I love hearing all of that, ladies. And can we add one more thing to driving to the exam center? Yes. Just wear what you're going to wear that same day. Okay. So again, we're put, putting predictability. You're like dressing up just, you know, and let, let's not be complicated with dressing up, okay? We go simple. Yes. <laughs> right? Like this. So you pick your winning clothes, whatever that means to you. If it was me, I know I'm going to wear my black yoga pants with my black shirt on, okay? With my black hoodie, it's like no brainer. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, do, do you have an idea what you want to wear, Lauren and Emily? Um, yeah, I have um, a gray sweater that is my comfort sweater. I wear it okay. a lot. Probably just that with jeans. We need to pick out which jeans. So, this, the morning of, you have no time to think, okay? <laughs> okay. Your socks, who cares? You got to pick them today. Okay. This is like your winning outfit. Like, this is it. You got to plan ahead for sure. Yeah. What about you, Emily? Do you have a, an outfit? Uh, okay. I have a pair of jeans that are really, really soft, and they basically feel like sweatpants. And so I feel like if I wear those, I'll be comfortable and relaxed. Still working on what shirt I'm going to wear. We're not sure yet. Normally, <laughs> I can go for, like, a sweater or a sweatshirt so I can, like, be comfortable and mm -hmm. not worry too much about what's going on with my outfit but I'll work on that all right let's work on that everything needs to be planned and we for plan the brain is planned and you just go according to the success story that you already created for yourself that's it yeah everything the support you had so far with school your professors your classmates you know it's all there already and the last bit is a little bit of just faking it. And your brain is just going to believe it. And things happen like that. You know, if you read um, books about, you know, successful people, all of that, you know, so success didn't come by chance. You know, it was, it was planted and magical things happen when you plant it like that. And I'm loving hearing that you have about a month because one month is great to create a new habit. Like plenty of time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Definitely gonna start today with that. Awesome, awesome. And Lauren, please put boundaries, okay? I know it's, it's <laughs> this difficult thing for you. Okay. It's um and it's difficult for me too because in a way I'm I'm very much a people's pleaser. Like, you know, I that's why today I took ten phone calls. Like, you know, I want everybody to you know, to know that if they're supported and right now all the schools are moving online. So, you know, I've been on it like all the time. Yeah. Also, you know, it, it drives, it, it, it drains you as well. So, you know, just, just make sure that it's within your boundaries because you're the one who controls how the exam is going to go, right? Yes. People around you, they need just to support you. And after that, you know, who cares? <laughs> exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> The good thing about the boards is so it's a one-time deal. If you pass, it's a one-time deal in life. Exactly, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Way to put it. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm so glad we chatted today, ladies. Yeah, it was, we had a lot of great tips coming out of it. Thank you. Yeah, thank, thank you so much. You. I love that you came forward. And um, yeah, one of my goals is, you know, I don't like the usual tips about studying hard or whatever. It's like, obviously <laughs> exactly. <laughs> anybody can tell you that so you know i really try to come up with um you know things because um, i continuously study the brain in many different ways not just in memory techniques that's one of my specialty but all of that is related you know memory is related to how the chemical function of brain that's how you feel so uh, you know, I, I love putting that touch, and I'm glad that you liked it as well. And what I want to hear, guys, is now, Claire, I passed the boards. Yes, <laughs> we want to see and hear. Yeah. Yes. Can you do that when you're done? Yes, definitely. That's the goal. Mm -hmm. That's the goal. There's one goal, and give yourself something to look forward to afterwards. Is that going to be ice cream? Is that going to be beer? You know, I'm not here to promote alcohol, especially if you're <laughs> underage. Please do not take my advice. Um, what is it for you? 
you want to plan it, Lauren? Like, if there was one thing you're going to do after that. There's one thing I'm going to do after it. I'm going to come home, take a nap, nap. hang out with family. Hang out with family. Okay, sounds great. Take a nap. I mean, yes, yeah. I'm tired. What about you, Emily? Um, I like the idea of ice cream. That's always uh -huh. a good reward for me. I love yeah. some ice cream. And just kind of like Lorraine said, uh, like just celebrating that I got through it, even if you don't know yeah. your story yet, just celebrating with you uh -huh. and being around uh -huh. them. What would you eat? Besides the ice cream? Oh my goodness. Uh, maybe I would get like some takeout or something. I don't know if I would want to really cook that night. I would want to like treat myself. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Whatever that means to you. <laughs> takeout sounds great. You're going to be exhausted. Oh yeah. So either food is waiting for you at home or someone else is going to do the work for you that day. Okay. You got to think how difficult that was as well for you. Yeah. I remember what I, I did. I and again, guys, if you're under like age of drinking, please don't follow me. But I went to dental hygiene school being much older, actually. I was the oldest in my class. I already actually had a master's degree before I did dental hygiene. Wow. So, um, you know, that's how I used to. Um, I've been about 15 years of education in my life. A lot of in museum settings, making their curriculums and teaching schools. Uh, anyhow, you know, I picked up some beer, you know. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I did and then I watched TV like there's nothing else I could do I was fried entertainment just great yeah. so yeah, yeah yeah but I want you to just think about it just because it's like a fun feeling a feel-good thing and then you know then that can you know and all of these little tricks can help you get through the hurdle of thinking the examination is such a big day and just bake this into your success story as well the reward afterwards mm -hmm. bake it bake it okay. all right well i you know i wish you the best ladies and can you remind me again which school you are going to in um or is that oregon oregon yes we go to mount hood community College. oh mount hood yes yes okay Perfect, perfect. Mount Hood is great. I had many conversations with um, your faculty members over there too. Okay. How yeah. many How many classmates did you have? We have eighteen right now, seniors. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Well, all I wish is for you ladies to take the boards on time, and yeah. even if it gets pushed back, okay, know that it is going to happen. The techniques apply. It's not because, it, let's say the board, it's like, you know, they email you saying, hey, sorry, we can't take you in Jul um, June. You have to come in July. You know, yeah, you got yourself 30 more days to think about your success story. Exactly, yeah. It's a great mm -hmm. way to put it. All right. Well, it was so nice having you today. Oh, and nice um, chatting with you. Thank you so much. I, I thank you all. Thank you for all. all I want to hear, yeah, all I want to hear is, Right? Two words. I passed. That's it. <laughs> Those are the two I'm words. <laughs> the magic words. Yeah. And you have my contact. So if you have other questions in the meantime, you know how to reach me, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. But thank you. And I'm pretty sure this really helped so many people. You know, well, it helped us. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm going to let you go. What time is it over there, Bob? 2 p.m. or so? Yeah, it's 2 p.m. here. What are you going to do today for the rest of the day? Make a schedule and study. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And Emily? Uh, hopefully get a little studying done while there's no one else home right now and it's nice and quiet. Ah. And then early tonight, I'll go see some family. Okay. All right. Well, have fun. Study is a, you know, it's a privilege, okay? Yes. Like, you know, let's think that way positively. Mm -hmm. You're right. I'm going to let you go now. So thanks for being here again. Yeah. We had Lorian and Emily from Oregon. They're all going to pass the boards. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Bye. Bye. Thank you.